Jesus, you want to give me a hand? Chevy, you want to you wanna help too? Okay. We've got a project in the garage. All right, so it's a big day. Theo's one year old now and he's 25 pounds, which means it's time to move him into the next stage of car seat. Going from rear facing infant seat to a forward facing booster seat. And there it is. Chevy, you gonna help me put it in? Can you help me put it in? That was a gift from Grandpa and Nana. Yeah, a while ago already. This is the base. I gotta put this away with the other seat. This is what I just took out of the back of the car. Excuse the mess here, all my Christmas lights. But uh, hey, this is real life, right? I'm not a big Hollywood, nothing set up. I'm just a real guy. <laughs> so this is the base. Took that out. Diesel and Chevy have been a great help. So now we gotta put this one in here. Right into here. Right where the other seat was. I guess we're not gonna need this mirror up here anymore. Probably keep that with the other car seat because we will hopefully need it again. So this is a 2014 GMC Terrain. And it's done really good for us. It's a really good little family vehicle, but it is a small family vehicle. It does what it needs to do. It's got four doors um, in the interior here. Let's see, there's not too much space in the front. The front is sort of like a car. Not too much space. The thing is when Britt and I go grocery shopping, we're taking up the front, right? And then Theo is here on this side and then his diaper bag and everything's on the other side over there. And then in the back here, that's where his stroller goes. So we have limited space for groceries. And I know, I know, I know. First world problems. Well, I live in the first world and we have problems too, okay? This is, this is what I'm dealing with here. So the entire back space of the terrain is taken up by the stroller. Now we tip the stroller up and we have room back here. So we can take some groceries, but not enough for our family to last us like two weeks. Not nearly, we can't. But we make it work. Big. I'm saying this because we're, like I was saying the last couple of days, we're in the market for a bigger vehicle in the next two years. Not right now, right now, but in the next two years. Watch out, Diesel. Watch out, buddy. Watch out, watch your face, watch your face. There you go. So, in the next two years, uh, we want to upgrade to a GMC Yukon XL. Not too sure if we'd go brand new. We'd probably go, like, used, back off a lease or something. Someone who, uh, a business who maybe leased it and used it just in the city. So it doesn't have many kilometers on it. I'd, obviously I'd like to go brand new, but mm. have you seen the price tags on those things? If I had all the money in the world, we would get a, a Yukon, a GMC Yukon XL Denali. Oh, oh that makes me so happy. Maybe we can pull it off, but I doubt it. Those things are starting at like $130,000 Canadian. <laughs> Even if you are rich, you gotta justify to yourself in your head spending that kind of money. But don't underestimate me, I could justify it. If we can pull it off, we'll pull it off, but it'll probably be a used one or on sale or on a good deal. Um, they're expensive vehicles, but you know, if we can get into one, that would be ideal because we want enough room for Britt and I, our kids, all of our luggage, our dogs as well, all of their stuff, and plus room for extra storage, which means you need a, a GMC Yukon, preferably a Yukon XL, but you know, you know me, big dreams. But if I want something bad enough, I'll find a way to work for it. I'm, I don't expect it to be given to me. I don't expect it just to fall into my lap. I expect to have to work for it. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that we get one, I just know I'm gonna have to work really hard in order to get one. It's a good thing I really like working and I really like my job. So I don't mind working hard if we get a Yukon XL. We'll see. Anyways, let's bring ourselves back down to earth here. We're uh, spending too much time in dream world. But remember, you can always take things back from dream world if you're willing to work for it. So let's get this car seat put in here. Let's figure this out. Oh, dust off the bottom of this, it's sitting on the ground. Alright, okay, 
So I have researched how to properly install this. It shouldn't take too long. I've already got it all set up. We had Theo inside it uh, in the house already just to make sure it was all adjusted properly for him and that it fit properly. And here we go. Hey, yeah, definitely gonna have to take this mirror off because that's gonna be in the way. Another reason why we would need a bigger vehicle. Look how big this thing is in here, right? That seat's not even very far back, but we're not gonna need this mirror on here because uh, that's gonna be in the way. So I'll have to take that mirror off to make room for this. Let's do that right now before I ding it up with that. This thing is so much bigger than Theo's other one. When we had him in here, I'll see if I can remember to throw a picture up here for you, but when we had him in here, he looked like a newborn again, like how small he looked when we put him in his infant seat. He's just a tiny little guy. And uh, now he's a year old. Putting him in this seat, he looks like a tiny little guy again. Uh, how do I get this thing out of here? We gotta get this mirror off. Oh, these cup holders come off. I better make sure I don't show him that. Because uh, otherwise he'll be taking those off. How do we do this? Oh, there we go. It's that one. Is there another one? Ah, well, that's simple enough. Okay. All right, so let's put that one out. Okay. Well, that's how it's supposed to be. Not just a trucker. So when you see those truckers out there on the road, just remember there's a lot more to us than that big, slow, annoying vehicle you're following. We have a, a life and a family at home as well. See, now I'm trying to figure out, like, I think I should probably move this up. I gotta figure out how to move this, take this headrest out of here. Maybe it's okay there, you know? No, it's not actually, because I'm gonna have to, uh, oh, I gotta get the center mount through there first. That's right. First. And I know it's a little bit dark in here right now, but I'm gonna hook this onto back here. There we go. Let's tighten that up once we're done. That's the center mount. All right. Okay. Take this on this side. Put that in there. There's a buckle on this side. Hooked in, I just gotta tighten it all up. This booster seat comes with uh, different settings. This side's French, the other side's in English. You don't have to trust me, but uh, we're on to the first stage of uh, forward facing, and then a second stage, and then a sixth stage. And after that, it turns into a booster seat where this thing's sitting straight up. And it's just a booster seat. And then once we get past that stage, this whole back part of this comes off of here and it just leaves the bottom seat. And then it's just, just a booster seat. Because I didn't know this before we had kids. Like, kids have to be in their booster seats for a long, long time. Way longer than I was growing up, I, I feel. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I was in a booster seat pretty long. I don't remember, really. I just never thought of it. I guess that was just normal to me, right? If I had a booster seat, that was just normal. But, yeah, he's in, I'd have to research it again. Don't they have to be in there until like, they're, like, almost 10 years old or something? Am I, am I like, way overshooting this? To a certain weight, I think, anyways. But yeah, so this this is a, a car seat that is good pretty much straight from infant. Like we could use it for Theo as well when he was an infant. Just we decided to use the other one because the other one was a click. A click in, click out, and it connected directly to his stroller. So it was just easier for us to get around. But you could use this one from a newborn all the way up till they don't need a booster seat anymore. Till they're uh, you know a lot older. You learn a lot when you become a parent. And there's like, they're pretty strict with this stuff too. Like, gotta make sure that the kids are secured in the car correctly. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing, because <laughs> I still remember, I, I think I still lived in the, the wild days a little bit, where they had station wagons without seatbelts. Like they had station wagons with uh, like two or three rows of seats, and then there was a seat in the back yet, like in the back facing backwards, and you could like wave at people and like make faces at them through the back window in traffic. And there was no seatbelts. Or maybe there was, we just didn't use them. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you can't do that anymore. Nope.
uh, you get in big trouble. So I'm gonna just tighten this all up here and then we'll be done. Now we've gotta make sure that it's good and tight, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna climb into it just like this. And there's a cable on this side that tightens it down. So I'm gonna put weight in it and then pull it up to tighten it. Okay. Yeah, right. It's solid. Just gonna snug up this back one. Which way do we gotta pull on this? There we go. That comes through this way, right? Done. It's all set and ready to hit the road. And as he gets bigger, we lift, uh, we have to loosen it up and just lift this headpiece up further and further just so that the shoulder straps uh, stay at or above his shoulders. But that'll be his seat in the car for the next however many years. Nice. Got a nicer seat than me. Speaking of, I'd really like to get a new seat for my truck eventually. It's not near, even near the top of my list of things that I need for my truck, like Old Blue, my big semi. Eventually though, there's a bunch of other things I need to do first, like the frame, that's priority number one. Oh, it's gonna be an expensive job, but we're gonna get it done right, so I don't have to worry about it again for a very long time. So we'll get that done, and then I can start worrying about, you know, getting new seats in there. I want to make sure that it's one that I pick out myself and I want to sit in it first. <laughs> I want a pretty fancy one. I mean, you sit in that seat for hours and hours and hours every day, day after day after day. I want to make sure that it's one that's uh, perfect for me. Eventually we'll get there though. All right, so this is our storage room that we got to work on in the next week, hopefully. And that's the base right there. This is the the old car seat. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Oh, 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 there we go. Okay. And there we go. We won't need that one again until we have another baby. Click connect, that's what it's called. It just made it so easy because you could just, you know, click that out of there so easily and just click it into the stroller and leave him buckled in there. But now he's too big for it. And this is a rear facing only, I believe. Yeah, rear facing. So, that's that. In storage. Oh, and here's his height recording thing. <laughs> height record. My sister Cheryl made this for us. And the first entry is already here. Right there. One year, March 22nd, 2024, almost two and a half feet. All right, we're working. We're not hardly working, but uh, I'm gonna get these springs up there replaced. I was supposed to have the rest of this week off, like I've been telling you to get a lot of stuff done. Turns out we got a little bit of, a little bit uh, swamped at work and I've got to head into work. Freight needs to be delivered tomorrow. So actually the day after tomorrow, but it needs to be picked up tomorrow. So I'm going into Winnipeg to pick up some freight in the morning and then I'm delivering that to Thompson the following morning, Thompson, Manitoba, which is eight hours north into the province of Manitoba here. And uh, I walked through a spider web, didn't I? Where did that come from? Sorry, I'm just sort of, uh, half panicking right now because I had a whole bunch of stuff I was going to get done with the truck and now I can only get a few things done so I had to sort of prioritize which things and the springs here made the cut. Uh, those springs broke, it's being held up mostly by a bungee up there right now and I bought a new one. So I'm going to replace that so we can head out on the road tomorrow. Head up north, deliver first thing in the morning the next day and then head back here. Got a Easter gathering, it's Good Friday this coming Friday. So I have an Easter gathering on Friday and I have another Easter gathering on Sunday. First things first, we got this piece here which holds, holds the lines. 
You know, this is what happens sometimes. You make plans and you know you think you're gonna have time to get stuff done and then plans change and you're needed. Duty calls, as they say. And I had most of my tools at home too because I have a whole bunch of projects I was gonna get done at home. I still have to put together that treadmill when we get back. I have it in the back of the pickup right now. And I've gotta edit like six videos. And it's five o'clock already. Not gonna get it all done. One of these days, you know, one of these days I'm gonna be caught up and then I'll be like, I got it all done. And then a whole other pile of things will fall on me. That's okay, that's life. That is the way it goes. Better to be busy than bored. Nothing to do. Oh, that was so old, the thing just broke off. Good thing we're replacing it. And there you go. All set and ready. I need to get a new bar for across there on the top. It still works. I bumped it at one point and that's still good. <laughs> still does the job. It holds my airlines uh, up. So they're not just sitting on the uh, catwalk here, right? When I'm hauling a trailer. Okay, so now I've got to get that treadmill down here. And I've learned something today. I learn something every day, and today's lesson is that treadmills are heavy. That's a, that is a, uh, that's a lot of, a lot of treadmill in there. I gotta figure out how to put it together. <laughs> we had one, right? We had a treadmill at our old house, um, but it got uh, wrecked. It's still in my shop. I have to throw it out. It's garbage. There's a new one. Anyone know how to put together a treadmill? Well, you ever wonder what a disassembled treadmill looks like? Now you have your answer. That looks like a lot of work. Oh, it comes with tools. Nice. Should be pretty simple, I think. I mean, how complicated can it be? Looks like there's some damage on it. I have to get the wife's green light before I open it any further. It's not bad. This looks like the cord rubbed on it or something. There, there. Well, I got the green light. We're gonna keep it. We're not gonna send it back. Damage isn't that bad. It's just disappointing, you know, when you uh, get something new, you expect it to arrive without any damage. That's sort of what my job's all about as a truck driver, right? This was damaged in transport. This cord here was packaged incorrectly. It was rubbing on there. And we're pretty sure that this thing came straight from China because uh, it took two weeks to get here, two or three weeks to get here. So it took a little while. So I'm guessing it probably came straight from the plant in China and somebody there didn't stow away that cord properly. And the whole ride here over the ship and over the oceans and through the trucks and on the trains and to our door, it rubbed on there, so that's why I say, as a truck driver, it's more than just driving the truck. It's making sure stuff like that doesn't happen to the freight you're hauling. Minor. I'll give you one more look at it. It's it's very minor. Not worth sending it back over. It's hard to get it. Ugh, there's a light right above me, so the shadow wants to... There you go, you see that? You just expect stuff to come without that kind of stuff, but it's probably going to be more dinged up right away, but that's different because when you damage your own stuff, it's your fault, right? At least then all the damage is yours, but eh, it's okay. No big deal. You men out there understand, though, you husbands. When something like that happens, you always got to check with the boss first. 
before you go any further. You shut down all production. You shut down the whole thing until you get the boss to give you the green light. I'm trying to think of the best way to get it out of that box. It is pretty heavy. Bet you it'd be easiest just to cut the box out from around it. I think this is around about the time when we're supposed to open up the instructions. There is so much waste in packaging nowadays. Like I understand like what I was saying before, you wanna make sure that when you're transporting stuff that the stuff doesn't get damaged, that it's all secure in there. But really? That's a lot of styrofoam, and I'm no tree hugger, but that's a lot of styrofoam. For what? It's just gonna go in the garbage. I mean, look at that. Look at all that garbage. It's just garbage. Not that. That's the actual treadmill, but all that. Just for packaging. I mean, I'm glad they do that so that it arrives good, right? But, I mean, there's gotta be a better way. <sighs> I had to call the boss down again. Got some more damage and this one's worse. So we had uh, this little scuff down here, right? Not a big deal. But we got this now. This is what you get when you order stuff online and don't go to the store to get it. Ah, man. That's really frustrating. So, we decided at this point it's too complicated to send back because of all that. And it still works. We believe, I haven't tested it yet, but hopefully it works. I'm just gonna glue this together. So you can't really tell. Really disappointing though. I don't know when that got cracked, if that was in transport or what, but we ordered this thing on Amazon. Most people would go to the store, right, and buy it. We just don't have the time. We've been very, very busy and we need to get a treadmill in here. Well, that's the price you pay. So I gotta go find some super glue right now and try out my glue skills. Not gonna lie, it's really disappointing. Gorilla Super Glue. I really like Gorilla products. I'm not doing an ad for them, but you guys use their stuff? They use their glue all the time. Their glue, their tape, their Velcro. Uh, mostly their glue, though. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a few dabs in there, hold it together for about 10, 20, 30 seconds. Hopefully that'll hold it and Hopefully that'll be good. Sesame Street to the rescue. <laughs> it's just putting weight down on this section here. So, uh, you can see that there's a little bit of glue popping out here yet, but that's okay. So this is glued shut. I'm gonna wait for that all to dry, and all those little like bits that are sticking out, you'll just be able to break off once it's dry. And yeah, you'll be able to see the crack there. We're gonna put a sticker over it, or we could even paint this little section here. All right, there's all the mess. And here is the treadmill. You lift it up from this here until you can hear a little click down there. It's got wheels there. You can grab up here, pull it back and roll it around wherever you want it. And to uh, bring it down, you just kick this here and let us slowly come down like that. That's pretty cool, eh? <laughs> you don't have to worry about it like, wham, falling down really fast. It's got a nice shock on there. I like that. Hmm, huh, cool. Now to test to see if it works. Get 
that's plugged in. All right, so we got that there. Ooh. Sounds like somebody's getting tired upstairs. I'm getting tired too. Okay, so I'm gonna have this clip onto you. That's the safety switch. If it comes off of there, it stops. All right, so we got her plugged in. Let's try this thing out. Start. It's gonna warn us. Oh, oh, ho. there we go. Speed this thing up, come on. Come on. Oh, that light is glaring right on there, eh? Okay, and there we go. Nice. Let's see if this thing works. Perfect. And that's my sort of idea to store it. We'll see if it stays there or not. I like it, uh, I can put the little ottoman there, just in case if something bumps that shock. This thing's not gonna come down very quick, right? But just in case something bumps it, at least that's there to stop it before it comes all the way down, right? I don't know, I'll see where Britt wants it. Doesn't really matter to me where it goes. Well, I'd say that was a successful evening, other than the slight damage on the, the treadmill. So it's the next morning right now. I've got to get ready to head out. I'm here with Old Blue, getting it all ready to go. And we've got to head up north to Thompson. So that's up into northern Manitoba. If you look on the map, it sort of looks like it's in central Manitoba. But uh, to us here in Manitoba, that's like, that's in the northern part of the province. Anywhere north of there, uh, or a little ways north of there, there's some roads. But most of the towns and stuff up there are... Uh, seasonal access once you go past Thompson. I mean, you can go up to Gillum. We've been up there before. Uh, Split Lake, you can take the ferry across to York Landing. Been up there. And uh, there are some gravel roads that go past there, but a lot of the communities north of Thompson, uh, during the summer, you have to fly in, or uh, you can take the train up to Churchill. I think there's a road that goes all the way to Churchill though, but that's like the one town. There's not much up there is what I'm trying to say. There's not much up there past Thompson. So we're gonna go up there, it's about eight hours north. Got to go pick up my load in Winnipeg in the morning, so I was planning on spending a little bit more time at home. I had a little bit more stuff to do, but duty calls, so we got to hit the road. I'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me at home. We're back to trucking in the morning. I'll see you then. Don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss it. I'll see you at 4 p.m. Central Time.